I came from Mike, Massachusetts yay. today. Yeah, public testimony because Kratom has helped me so much in there my it, Look, they're showing the back. Life. I've seen great things. It's yeah, done I like how so they many pan. people I know. <laughs> that was I great. attended Johnson and Wales University, and my wife and I would like more than anything to to buy a house to raise our three year old son here in Rhode Island. We're currently unable to move here due to the sole fact that I utilize Kratom tea as part of my daily health regimen. And Kratom is currently scheduled by the state as a Schedule One narcotic, which makes absolutely no sense. Uh, years ago, I was severely addicted to opiates and stuck on Suboxone for over eight, eight years. Suboxone helped at first, but then really started to negatively affect my overall mood and happiness. I suffered greatly on Suboxone with dental damage, multiple extracted teeth, multiple root canals, all stemming from that medication, which is touted as the gold standard of treatment. Recently, the FDA quietly released that Suboxone causes serious dental damage, including in people with no history of dental problems. Suboxone is laden with artificial preservatives, sweetener, flavorings, and food dyes, all the stuff we're told to stay away from. Uh, I didn't realize how negatively it was affecting my overall health and well-being until I was able to get off of it with the help of Kratom. I deal with chronic hip, joint, and back pain due to an old wrestling injury. Kratom and medical cannabis is what works for me. Um, I took some Kratom before coming here today. I, I don't find it psychoactive or intoxicating. I feel clear-headed, slight mood boost, and relatively low to no pain. With Kratom, I'm able to take on the day and be a fully present husband and father without worries of constantly being in debilitating pain or frequent trips to doctor's offices or pharmacies. I am also the host and producer of a podcast called Kratom Guy Show, where we are often joined by influential doctors and advocates from around the nation. We've had numerous scientists, doctors, as well as both behavioral and addiction psychologists on the show, and they all agree on one thing, Kratom should not be banned and consumers should not be criminalized. Plant medicines like Kratom aren't for everybody, and in rare cases, some people may have poor reaction to it, especially if they're dealing with serious underlying health conditions mm -hmm. or on other drugs or substances. Although Kratom does work amazingly well for millions, estimated 10 to 15 million uh, daily U.S. consumers who utilize Kratom without issue, safe access should be a first-line <clears throat> first line option uh, because it's a viable option that works. I think the big question is, does somebody and their families, because it's not just the individual who suffers if they're arrested and persecuted for Kratom, it's the entire, <clears throat> entire family and their community that suffers. In Rhode Island, um, does somebody who has harmed nobody, who has threatened to harm nobody, deserve to be thrown in prison over tea leaves? Uh, due to Kratom being wrongfully classified as Schedule One narcotic in Rhode Island, a bag of leaf powder this size is punishable up to $500,000 and life in prison. I don't think there's anybody on this committee or in this room today that thinks that I, don't, I shouldn't be able to go home to my son because of a bag of tea leaves. This prohibition on Kratom has prevented me and my family from buying a home and moving here. And so for me, the bottom line is nobody should be persecuted for the possession of plants. So you may have not have written the bad bill criminalizing Kratom leaves as Schedule One narcotic, but you do have a chance to right this wrong to make sure nobody in Rhode Island is sent to prison, leaving their families to suffer over tea leaves. I believe you have a duty to your constituents and the people of Rhode Island to make sure this never happens by passing the Creative Consumer Protection Act. Thank you. Yes, Mike! Yay, Mike. Awesome. Any questions from Mr. Overstreet from the committee? Thank you. Senator Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have you done any research as far as how long Creton has been used through the centuries? <laughs> as far as I know, it's been used centuries, uh, folk medicine, and traditionally, uh, laborers use it um, as a energy boost and to reduce pain. Because they they've been using this in Asia, who are big herbal. I mean, they use herbs for 
many, many, many things. I mean, our West, the Western culture is so advanced, but um, they can't, they've been, I, I did a lot of research like years and years ago on it. And they would use it for the field workers too, because they would come home in pain and they prescribe, I mean, it's been used for centuries. So anyway. Yeah, this lady's just trying to get the good questions out there. Man. Yeah. There's yes. One death reported in the origin countries and the deaths that are reported yep. here, the vast majority of them have other substances in their system. A lot of it is uh, fentanyl. Yeah. 